All right, here we are um, with our sixth grade math lesson from lesson 3.4, Math and Focus. We are applying our fraction and decimal rules to some real world problems. And your student has only been assigned numbers one through five. It will be due next block when I see them next week. So um, my today class, as in February 1st, you will have to turn this in for Monday. And um, my tomorrow class, which I see on February 2nd, we're planning on this being due for you next Tuesday. So let's take a quick look. I'm going to try to zoom through these to kind of give you a little bit of um, hint and support if you need it. And hopefully once you kind of get things set up, you can maybe pause the video and finish them on your own. So it says solve, show your work. Sophia buys four, four, four fifths pounds of sunflower seeds. She eats one tenth of a pound of seeds each day. How many days will it take Sophia to eat all the sunflower seeds? I did try to start this with students already, so I sure hope you already see a bar model on your paper. So we are trying to bar model each problem as much as we can. We're trying to show some visual approach to get there to help us figure out whether we should multiply or divide. So I know four fifths pounds is the total. So I'm actually going to kind of box it in and show you. I'm starting with a total bar. Next it says she eats one tenth of the seeds each day. So I'm going to show you that she's going to take away one tenth for the first day and one tenth for the next day and one tenth for the next day. And that pattern is going to continue. Notice, we know a total, and we also know a part. This might be called a total part bar model. And it also helps me see that the seeds aren't going to magically multiply. Instead, it says she's taking out a little bit each day. She's removing parts or groups. That really is a division, isn't it? So in this case, we want to set up 4 fifths divided by 1 tenth. Now this isn't enough. We need to keep simplifying until we get to a final answer. So I hope you remember doing keep, change, flip, or multiplying by the reciprocal. So what does that mean? We keep the 4 fifths. We change to multiplication, and this next fraction becomes its reciprocal, or we flip it to 10 over 1. Well, that's not too bad, except I noticed something. I could go ahead and multiply, or I could cross-simplify first, because both of these numbers, this 5 and this 10, will get a little bit smaller if I divide them by 5. So let's think. 5 goes into 10 twice. I write that nice and big on the outside of my cross-simplifying. And 5 goes into 5 only one time, so I show that 1 on the outside of my cross-simplification. We're ready to multiply across, because 4 and 1, well, that 1's as low as you can go, kind of like the limbo. So let's look. So multiplying straight across now, 4 times 2 gets me 8, and 1 times 1 gets me 1. And that's kind of a funny looking answer. Some people would tell you that's an improper fraction, and they divide the 8 by 1, and they find out it goes in there 8 times. That is a true statement. Another way to see it is just to say, hey, what if I took that one away because it's a whole number? Any number over one becomes, or the numerator becomes, the whole number. So eight looks like a good number answer. We just have to figure out what were we answering. How many days? Oh, this is how many days Sophia's seeds will last. So let's make sure we didn't let eight days. If you give me a stronger sentence that talks about Sophia and how many days those seeds will last, and maybe you even mention the word sunflower in there, that's a great idea too. Let's move on to number two. And I gave you a visual on your papers today, um, something that I don't, oops, I don't have on mine. But I'll do that real quick just to kind of give you a reminder of what's sitting there and why. Oops, I'll try anyway. So I gave you something that I kind of considered a clock. And the reason why I did that is because in a minute we're going to have to do a little bit of a conversion. We're going to have to do some changing of a number a little bit. So let's read number two and see how that fits. Eugene takes five, six minutes to run one lap around the track. If Eugene runs around the track at the same pace for one quarter hour, how many laps will Eugene run? I notice an alert. In fact, it's kind of a big alert. Here I have minutes, here I have hours. What's wrong with this picture? Well, these two aren't the same size units, are they? So for that reason, I drew you a clock over here and I tried to show you what one quarter of an hour might look like if I shaded it in. Well, I want you to think about how many minutes make up that quarter of an hour. So maybe you're looking at a clock on the wall, an analog clock, which shows you 5, 10, 15. It would take 15 minutes. So we want to say one quarter of an hour is really the same as 15 minutes. That's going to be helpful because in my problem, I'm not going to use this quarter of an hour anymore. I can get rid of the alert. I can change this to 15 minutes. So let's think. Eugene is taking this long to run how many laps? Just one. He's going to run for the same pace, or at the same pace, for longer. He's running for longer than one minute. He's running for 15. If I were to draw that, 
here's his one lap. I could call this one lap, maybe. And it takes him five, six minutes. Five, six of a minute. Well, if he's going to run for um, an unknown number of laps, we don't know how many, we're trying to figure it out, uh, we are going to keep him running for longer, right? He's running for a longer amount of time. We don't exactly know how long that will be. It's kind of like saying five sixths of a minute and five sixths of a minute. And it's going to keep on going that, I, that way, right? So what I know is his total time. He's going to keep doing that until he reaches 15 minutes. So I know his total time here might be something worth boxing in and calling total. And the part is the part of the time or the part of those minutes that it takes for one lap. So I'm also going to label this part just because I want you kind of familiar with that terminology. We have parts, we have holes, or a part and a total. So if I know the total time he's got to work with, 15 minutes, he's splitting it into little five, six chunks. He's dividing it up. This is another division problem, which I would love to do, except I don't know if this 15 is a whole number. Maybe it'd be good to write it as a fraction over one. And be careful, there's no cross simplifying, no, 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 until we turn this into a keep, change, flip, or a freeze, change, flip. So let's keep the first fraction. The 15 over one stays the same. We change the multiplication and our flip makes the six fifths of an it. So this is that reciprocal we talk about sometimes where I flip the fraction upside down. I notice some cross simplifying. Now we can do, as long as we're in multiplication mode, beep, things are good. We can go ahead and cross simplify. So what divides nice into 15 and five? Well, the answer would be five, right? That's the biggest number that goes into both nicely. Five goes into 15 three times, and five goes into five one time. So I think I'm really ready to multiply across. The reason why I say that is the six in this one, well, one is as low as you can go, kind of like the limbo, right? So let's try this. What's three times six? 18, and one times one is one. This 18 over one looks a little funny. It might be called improper, or you might remember that we can take away the denominator whenever it's a one, and just write a whole number. 18 or something. What were we finding? How many laps? That's what we were answering. So let's make sure we talk about 18 laps. It makes sense to me. The more time I have to run, the more laps I can run. Although I'm a little out of shape and I should probably start smaller than that. All right, here we go. Number three. Uh, next it says I have a pound of beans and I know how much it costs. Ooh, this is helpful. A pound means one pound and it costs $4.70. Mrs. Patel is going to buy six and a half pounds, or six and five tenths pounds of beans. Oh, she's buying more, it sounds like. How much does she pay for the beans? And then we get to check to see if our answer is reasonable. So let's think about this. If I bought one pound, I could show that for you. One pound. I could show you that that would cost Mrs. Patel $4.70. Hey, that's a name in RLC. How cool. Anyway, uh, if she decides to buy more, Mrs. Patel's not buying one pound, she's buying 6.5. One, two, three, four, five. And that point five is kind of like half back here, isn't it? Don't need that piece. This is going to be six and a half or 6.5 or six and five tenths pounds. And that means it's four dollars and seventy cents and four dollars and seventy cents for every single pound. It seems like this is getting more and more expensive because she's buying more, so she's spending more. This gets a little bit tricky right here. This is only half a pound, so it shouldn't cost as much as $4.70, should it? Well, I do notice something. I want to figure out the total, and it looks to me, oops, I probably should have stopped right about there, shouldn't I? Okay, it looks to me like um, Mrs. Patel is buying more and spending more. This amount that she's gonna pay is growing, so I'm gonna go ahead and write that as a multiplication. When the number's growing, I'm expecting her to spend more. I have to increase the amount she'll pay with multiplication. Notice I'm not lining up my decimals. That doesn't even bother me because we are multiplying today. Five times zero is actually zero and five times seven is 35. We'll keep the five regroup the three. Five times four is 20 plus three more makes 23. Well, not too bad, but I'm not done yet. I need to move over to the next place value. So if I'm done with this five, I need to show a placeholder. Sometimes we call that Bob. What's six times zero? Zero and six times seven? 42. We'll keep the 2 and regroup to 4. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 4 more makes 28. We get to add these two products and see what we get. 0 plus 0, 5 and 0, 3 and 2, 2 and 8, 
and two in one. That is some very expensive bean, or beans, I should say. Those are very expensive beans. $30,000. Um, I think that might be a little bit much. So I wonder if something went wrong. Or what am I forgetting in my decimal work? Oh, the decimal bank. I hope you're looking at your notes and you're looking back and you're remembering. We always bank our decimal and multiplication. What it means is I have two hops in my original number and one hop in the second part of the problem. So I total them up and I get three hops all together. Starting at the back of the number, we hop three times towards the front. Well, that doesn't look very much like money. And wasn't I trying to figure out how much she paid? So how much does she pay? This is the question. Okay, how much does she pay? How can I make this look more like money? Well, perhaps we would take off this extra zero. Do we need it at the back? Not really. And I'll give it a good dollar sign. We're measuring the units in dollars. $30.55. That's how much Mrs. Patel has to pay for those six and a half pounds of beans. Now notice it also says check for reasonability or reasonableness. So in this case, I could do some rounding, couldn't I? Just to check. This is just my check work. So what's four and 70 hundreds close to? Can you think of a whole number? Kind of close to five, isn't it? Kind of close to like five dollars. Look at this six and five tenths. If I were to round that, is it closer to six or seven? Well, closer to seven. So if I were to multiply five times seven with my estimation skills, I'd get 35. Here's my question. Does your answer look reasonable? Is this pretty close to $35? Well, it's not $30,000 like I thought it was a minute ago, right? $30 is pretty close to 35. So things check out. This is exactly what I'd like to see you do when you're thinking about whether there's reasonableness to your answer. And the next thing we need to look at is problem number four. Oops, we can try. Come on, pen. Whoa, we just got some craziness happening here. All right, and we'll try to fast forward here. Um, I am moving pretty fast tonight. Um, my son is anxious to get out of here. So for that reason, if I'm going too quick, I know you can slow down the pace. Um, right in YouTube, there's something in settings where you can do that. And if this is still too much, you can always put me on pause. Okay, number four. It takes 85 pails of water to fill up a tank. If the capacity of each pail is two and 6,500 gallons, what is the capacity of the tank? Check for reasonableness of your answer. So this is what I'm picturing. This is not a bar model at all. I'm picturing this tank, and then it's going to take 85 pails all together to fill it up. But what is each little pail worth? So I'm picturing a little pail here. This is not your typical bar model. It said that it was two and 65 hundredths, whoops, supposed to be a decimal there, two and 65 hundredths gallons in each of these little pails. Well, it's going to, um, it's going to take 85 of those to fill this. So then it says, what is the capacity of the tank? It really means, what's the total number of gallons? Total gallons is what they're asking me. I don't know the total this time. So it's kind of like saying, I want to fill this 85 times and dump it in. 85 times and dump it in. Emphasis on 85 times. So I'm going to use some multiplication here. And I would be careful about which number you decide to put on top. I'm going to choose a 2 and 65 hundredths because it has more digits that are important to multiplying. And the 85 can go right under it. Well, 5 times 5 is 25. We'll keep the 5 regroup the 2. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 2 more makes 32. 5 times 2 is 10, plus, that's a 3 up there, 13. And I'm ready to move over a place value. So sometimes I say X's and O's, here we go, or we just call Bob. We need some placeholder. So 8 times 5 is 40. We'll keep the 0, regroup the 4. 8 times 6 is 48, plus 4 more, 49, 50, 51, 52. We'll keep the 2 and regroup the 5. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 5 more, 16 and 5. Well, that will get me 21. I'm ready to add these up. 5 plus Bob, 2 and 0, 3 and 2, 1 and 1, and 2 and nothing here. This is a crazy amount of gallons. Is it possible? I think maybe not. We had a fish tank long ago. I don't think it held that many gallons. Maybe 30? Anyway, this looks too much to me. So let's go ahead and dig in and build that decimal bank. I should use a different color to show you my decimal hops. How many for the first number? Two. How many for 85? I don't even see it's decimal. Oh, it's at the back. 
So in this case, it doesn't take any hops or no places behind the decimal. A total of two hops should get it. Oh, take a look. This is a pretty large tank. It can hold this many gallons. All right. The last one we're going to look at is number five. Here it says a chef buys a lot of pounds of ground turkey to make some casseroles. Each casserole requires 13 hundredths of a pound of turkey. How many casseroles? Well, if you picture going to the store and you buy a lot of something, maybe you buy a lot of pounds of ground turkey. I can kind of picture that right now, bar model. Okay, so here's my turkey. It looks like I have um, the whole thing here would be five and 46 hundredths pounds. That's a lot, right? Five pounds, more than my family could eat for sure. And if you take a look, it says I'm going to split it or break it into or make some casseroles. Each casserole, there's a hint here, each casserole, I'm breaking it into parts, aren't I? This is really dividing it into 13 hundredths, 13 hundredths, again and again and again until I run out of turkey to be continued, right? I don't exactly know how many 13 hundredths will fit in here, so I just show you the idea. What I know is this 5 and 46 pounds is the total. And what I know is I take part of it each time. 13 hundredths is a part. I break it up into parts. So I'm really doing a division here. I'm really taking 5 and 46 hundredths divided by 13 hundredths. Oh, time for Simon Says, or the even better round of Schumann Says. It looks like this decimal needs to jump twice to the right. We need to make that 13 a whole number. And if Simon says hop twice to the right, we need to hop twice to the right in our dividend also. If I were to rewrite this for you, it looks like we're going to have 13 as a new divisor and 546 as our dividend. The decimal is at the back and I will bring it straight up in case we need to use it in some way, shape, or form. Your next step is really to divide. So 13 doesn't go into 5, but I bet it goes into 54. And I have to figure out how many times here. So I'm thinking... Uh, 3 times that is 39, 4 times that is 52, oops, I think 4 will work, 4 times 10 is 40, 4 times 3 is 12 more, 40 plus 12 gets me 52. When I subtract, I have 2 left, and I bring down the next place value. I now have 26 divided by 13, and that will actually work out nicely. If you check your charts, or you just think 13 plus 13, actually will get you 26. Two groups. 2 times 13 is 26, and when you subtract, oh, this thing terminates. It's a terminator. We are actually done, except we have to turn this into a nice answer. So the question was, how many casseroles? How many casseroles? Well, that zero out front is really just holding a place value, isn't it? Not a necessary one. And this decimal at the back, we don't typically show it with a whole number, so it looks like I could say 42 casseroles. Whoa, trying to get this on there. Uh, if I look back, um, I think I've done a nice job. I've shown you work for every single problem. I've shown you a model approach of some sort. I also have shown you how to check for reasonableness, although I see on number four we probably could have done better with that. So let's just talk about the checking step. We missed that here. Well, two and 65 hundredths is kind of close to three, isn't it? And 85, well, um, I don't know, it's kind of close to maybe 90. So let's think for a quick minute. 3 times 90, probably not the way I'd show it. How about 90 times 3? Well, 3 times 0 is 0, and 3 times 9 is 27. I need the answer close to 270. Does it check out? Yes, it does. It absolutely does. So we know we're heading in the right direction. Okay, I know we were flying today, but numbers 1 through 5, that's what you're shooting to have done for me next week. And I hope that these are becoming more and more independent for you the more we practice them.